It is time for a Canadian Freedom Movement update. We'll begin with the Queen of Canada. Remember, she has been hiding out in a school in a small town. Well, the locals of that town had a town hall about wanting her out of the town. The guy who owns the property, owns the school, sat alone during this meeting. Someone says, why can't we use the Emergency Act to remove the cult like they removed the truckers? There was actually an argument in the meeting when a woman stood up and sounded like she was defending the cult. The cult property owner clapped for her, and then she started cursing after being called a cult sympathizer. Eventually, it came out that even she wants the cult gone. There was also talk of at least one cult member following at least one underage child around the town. The cult tried to send cease and desist orders to locals. It looks like the group did end up abandoning the old school they were hiding out in. One of the latest videos shows the cult's group swarming a guy in a grocery store who the cult had previously called to have executed, and he made fun of them by showing up outside of their compound with a makeshift fake electric chair for his execution day. To show, you know, they don't have any power. He ended up asking for a manager, and I heard that he also later tried to file a police report because of how they went after him. The cult itself is now threatening the grocery store for not providing enough security for their queen. And she also, while in that grocery store, started harassing other random people in the store, and the cult uploaded videos of that, so it was not just the one man they went after. Now, not the cult, but the convoy, with their camp, their commune, um... It's not going too great. One of the convoy members that got previously charged for what they did in Ottawa, he was the one that tried to grab a woman who was getting arrested and now isn't allowed in certain parts of Ottawa. He went to a hotel that Justin Trudeau was at and the feds knew who he was and told him no funny business. He was later kicked off the property by the hotel owners and he wants to take him to small claims court over it. He says he lost his job due to the convoy. Uh, says at camp they have a plan. They have a plan at the camp, but he doesn't know the plan. But from east to west, you need to come because they got a plan. He isn't getting any younger. He did another update that I watched where, um, sounds fed up. Sounds like he's about to just quit and leave it all behind and go back to, you know, living a normal life. Um probably best for him sounds like he really might do that he was very bummed about the whole movement falling apart the camp did build things they were always supposed to fix a barn i haven't really seen the barn get fixed i did see them put a uh, shower in it without an exhaust pipe but um they, they built things that didn't look like long-term structures what it looked like is you're fending off a zombie apocalypse it really looked like they're building like walls to like a compound for a zombie apocalypse so like hastily built out of scrap material really weird um i'm gonna have to try to find some good pictures of this at some point and like link them because it's wild um one of the leaders claimed that 7 a.m friday alberta time he was gonna go live with people and they were gonna show the truth and i did tune in a little bit it was about the Coots Boys, which are basically their J6ers. Um, for those that don't know, the Coots Boys are guys that basically had a murder plot against police at the border and got arrested for it. And then they're like, no, they're innocent. They're patriots or whatever they try to call them. And they're basically the J6 protesters. You'll actually hear the same complaints on the corner as you will from those with the Coots Boys. Um, there's also accusations of stolen funds which is a really common trope, um, <laughs> actually, in convoys and stuff like that. I'll actually have a link to some of that drama in the pinned comment if you want to see them talk about it. But yeah, there's a whole bunch involving with claims of stolen funds. I'm not going to go into the specifics of it, but needless to say, it's not unexpected. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's not really doing too hot, from what I can tell. The actual camp itself for, like, the convoy... I mean, it's cold, they're running out of money, there's talk of no money, leaders are talking about how they don't want to be in a camp, they just want to get this done. People that are on the ground that live in Ottawa making videos about how they're done. It's... Eh. And then now we have people focusing instead on the Coots Boys, which again, a lot of these people, they can only do one thing at a time. So now that there's focus on the Coots Boys, I feel like that's just going to hurt the convoy more. Um, Again, I think I think it's early December, the uh, leader, like the main leader of the, the camp, the commune, 
has his court appearance or his his date for court in Ottawa. So it's not going to end before then. But if he goes to jail, I don't see it lasting more than a couple days of people packing up after. I feel like I feel like his court case is like what's keeping that small core group there. And as soon as that's over, they just don't have a need to be there. They're not going to get anyone to come. No one is coming.